All right, you've clicked on to today's tropical tidbit for Sunday. Over here in the Atlantic, the main attraction remains Invest 91L here east of the Lesser Antilles Islands. And uh, this is going to continue to try to organize as it comes west. But right now, it's a little bit of a mess. It's pretty elongated east to west over here. It has two centers. This is the main center here, possibly coupled with a mid-level feature that the models are currently locked on to and that the NHC is labeling as the low that should probably develop as it comes west-northwest. However, there's a second circulation right in here and the reason there is that is something I posted yesterday afternoon is that this tropical wave in here is very noticeable on visible satellite you can see the arc of clouds and convergence and thunderstorms right here nearing the islands now and bringing rain showers to the area this is racing off and it's leaving 91L behind. This is the original low that was associated with the tropical wave, and now this tropical wave is just leaving it. It's racing off. I'm guessing that it's because of this trade wind flow here is very fast compared to the flow down here, which is being converged by a monsoonal flow out of the southwest, which is abnormally far west for where it usually is, which is allowing this tropical wave to get pushed off to the west ahead of 91L, and thus the low center is kind of getting left behind here. And thus, at the southern end of this tropical wave, we have the secondary low that has wanted to hang on and is moving out ahead. These two circulations are now competing with one another. And it will be interesting to see where the eventual low center of this consolidates because we've got one of them that's already coming in towards the southern or middle islands here. So it'll be interesting to see which one becomes dominant. This one should theoretically have more support because it has the monsoonal flow coming into it, and that's the one that the models all develop. So we will see. However, if we zoom in on this real closely, this low is spinning around right in here, may try to hang back and try to merge with this other one in the middle here, forming a compromise eventually, which would end up in the system coming a little bit farther west and hitting the islands farther south than the models currently indicate. So it'll be interesting to see how that goes. I notice that convection is pretty weak with this right now. We, we had the strongest convection is over here. We have a few outflow boundaries to the north indicating some dry air that's getting wrapped around from the southwest, causing some of these thunderstorms to collapse. We did notice this was going to be an issue for this system and will impede significant <coughs> excuse me, organization for the moment. So development's not going to be rapid. It will be gradual with this. The good news for the Antilles Islands is that this probably won't be a tropical cyclone as it comes in right here or not a very strong one. I'm guessing the recon won't actually find that this is classifiable right now despite the thoughts that this should be a tropical depression already with two centers in here neither one may be fully closed especially this one in here I don't see this one being closed so the recon may very well find that this is not a tropical cyclone yet. The other thing to notice with that the system is if we look northeast there's a tropical wave way up here pretty far north so we're not used to seeing these here it also has no convection but if you look closely there is one right in here in the low level flow this is moving merrily along westward with the Bermuda High just to the north of 91L here and it's interesting because this kind of a wave you know it it puts the airflow, this is exaggerated, but the airflow moves like this around the wave in here, so there's some short wave ridging to the west of the wave. It'll be interesting to see whether this short wave ridging to the north of 91L keeps it on a farther south track as it enters the islands and keeps it a little bit farther south on entry into the eastern Caribbean. And again, the organization of the system will determine where the center ends up as well. So the models based on the current center, which is the eastern one here, bring it very bunched up. All the models are very in close agreement here on coming across the Leeward Antilles and Puerto Rico area, perhaps even the, D the Dominican Republic over the next couple of days. Puerto Rico and the Leeward Islands, Virgin Islands, Dominican Republic should all be preparing for a tropical cyclone to come through this area, probably strengthening as it comes by Puerto Rico over here. The models show a gradual sweeping turn off to the northwest here with time as it nears the northern Bahamas or the eastern Bahamas and moving north of the Bahamas in a couple of days. The reason they show that is because of this upper trough that we can see on the water vapor imagery coming across the eastern United States will eventually move off into the western Atlantic digging in here and bringing the system up to the north. Now today we're going to look at the GFS for illustrative purposes. This is the 12Z run 500 millibar chart for 72 hours. Here's that trough on the satellite imagery digging in all the way towards the Bahamas here. Here's our system which may be Emily. Ah, oh, these colors are coming back again, I'm sorry. This trough is in here, Emily's in here, going to be drawn north. If we go out to 96 hours, 
here's the trough and it's starting to leave actually already as fast as it came it's starting to move out and it's brought the system now north of the Dominican Republic and if we go out to day five notice that the trough is leaving pretty fast and we now have this sliver ridge this thin ridge developing to the northeast of what would be Emily in here keeping the storm on a west-northwest track so by the time we get out to day six we have the system in the Bahamas. Sorry, this blue color is showing up again. But if you can see this, the storm is right here in the Bahamas, and here's Florida right in here, continuing on a west-northwest track. <clears throat> now, if we go out to day seven, eventually the storm catches a shortwave trough over the eastern United States and starts curving west-northwest, or northwest, rather, and then eventually it starts moving around the ridge and on out to sea, but it passes pretty close to Florida. So we're wondering here, the big question is whether after this affects the Northeastern Caribbean, will the trough leave fast enough to allow this to affect the United States if it stays far enough south and west? Well, the interesting thing about this pattern here is if we go back to, what is this? This is day, day five in here. The biggest ridge in this pattern is the Texas Ridge keeping the drought going over the south in here. This is the dominant ridge in this pattern and this is going to be staying rock solid over the south to get this system south of that ridge would require it staying in the Caribbean south of the islands and then move out, which is a scenario that is not very likely right now so with this ridge staying rock solid in here you're not going to be able to see the system move west northwest across Florida and move right towards the center of that ridge that's not going to happen so with this northeasterly jet to the northeast of the system what's going to have to happen is that a short wave will come across the eastern United States as shown here and eventually pick this system up and curve it out very sharply. With a, with a jet oriented like this we're not going to get one of these systems that makes a sweeping recurve that hits North Carolina and New England on the way out. And uh, thus we're going to see a very sharp recurve with this if it does curve out. So it's going to be pretty hard to hit North Carolina with this system. So if we're going to get hit in the United States I think the most likely way for that to happen is for if this comes near the islands or just north of and stays in the southern Bahamas it'll hit southern Florida and then curve out very sharply that's the only way I can really see this hitting the United States at this point however it's still unsure as curve out a lot sooner or whether it will stay on a west northwest truck track long enough to threaten Florida and the western Bahamas. Right now I still want to see how the system looks when it hits the Puerto Rico area and the northeastern Caribbean to see if it is fully organized again. Right now it's a lot more disorganized than it looked to be yesterday and thus may develop slower. A slower developing system and a weaker one may track farther west before recurving. A stronger one that develops fast into a hurricane may recurve a lot faster as it feels the trough more. So again I want to see how this looks in here before I sell myself on whether this will affect the United States, but there is the possibility that it continues west-northwest and threatens these areas in here. So we will see how this develops over the next couple of days. Again, the hurricane hunters are in there today. We'll see if it gets classified. Pretty unorganized right now, so good news for the Antilles, but Puerto Rico may have to deal with a stronger storm, possibly the Dominican Republic as well. So we will see and monitor this very closely during this week. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.